What up, peeps? It's your girl, Dash. Come back from Real Takes. Well, it's Atomic Ads. It's reaction time, and this is to Wednesday. This will be for episode six, titled Quid Pro Woe. Now, the last episode, I really did enjoy seeing Wednesday uh, see her parents during, I want to say, parents' weekend, and noticing it just brings up some things that I was waiting for it to discuss in regards to the situation with her father, Gomez, and that status of him so-called being a murderer from the sheriff. Come to find out there was definitely some good backstory. I was really looking forward to seeing, you know, how did this so-called murder happen and come to find out dealing with a guy who was slightly infatuated with Morticia and also him, his father, their family having uh, a problem with the, the town and definitely with uh, Nevermore and trying to pretty much kill, you know, the kids in Nevermore, him coming up in there, setting up and in the midst of trying to deal with Gomez, getting him out the way so he could be Morticia. You're thinking Gomez did it, come to find out actually it was Morticia. He pretty much took the fall for her, loved her so much. He, he was willing even to go to jail, even though, as she said, during that quick little family session, um, all the charges were dropped. But come to find out, the way the sheriff at the time was, who is now mayor, was trying to cover up when she had put in, you know, a complaint about being stock, whatever, and all they ignored it. You didn't pay any attention to what the young lady was saying and all that. You didn't think anything of it. And look at what happened. What could have been avoided in an instance. Now, I wonder about one of the family members, which is the sister, the, the man's daughter. I'm like, where did she have been? They said, supposedly she went away, she got foster. But I'm like, did that really happen? Makes me wonder because of the way they panned on the photo with the sheriff. So I don't want to assume too much, but sometimes you you know things can be deceiving in that instance. Uh, seeing how Wednesday feels about um, the overall principal not caring about what happened to Eugene, covering up their tracks, doing this, knowing she's a shapeshifter and all that. And Wizzy thought, well, she going to tell show? She's like, you ain't going to do no such thing. And I can believe she will make sure that, like, don't play with her. We haven't seen really her wrath yet. And then the fact that them coming out fire will rain, like, you know, what's going on? Who's posting, making these little, you know, comments? I felt uh, bad for eating, dealing with her mother, trying to force her to wolf out. It's like, let it happen when it happens. They said sometimes some of them, are, you know, you know, slow at this uh, this particular, you know, moment happening for her. And it is. And I love how her father, even though he didn't say anything, eventually he did <laughs> open up like, you know, you do you. And I was like, that's right. She has her daddy's on her corner. But the mother was just doing the most. Now, for Bianca, knowing that that's how I wrote her name, and then you seeing all the instances of her and her mother wanting her to do the stuff with the siren, help them out, they're depleting, whatever. And she's like, I'll help you and my new stepdad, whatever, but I don't want nothing to do with you. So we'll have to see how that all turns out with her. No one knows that she pretty much sirened her way into the school. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen on the next episode with that. Uh, but yes, overall, it was a great episode. So I'm ready to see what this one's about. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. I'll say the rest of my thoughts and then you guys. <laughs> very on brand for you. You have a relative named Goody? She was one of the original outcasts. I've been attempting to summon her, but she seems to be ignoring my entreaties. Whoever you are, show yourself. Try anything and you'll lose limbs. Surprise! <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Oh. Happy oh. birthday to oh. you. Latin. Fire will rain when I rise. I was told you could teach me how to control my ability. There is no controlling a raging river. You must learn to navigate it without drowning. Do you always speak in riddles? Do you always seek simple answers? The path of a raven is a solitary one. You end up alone, unable to trust others. Don't blame Thing. The party was my idea. I believe everyone deserves to be celebrated on their birthday. I prefer to be vilified. May your 16th be as sour and misery filled as your desire. Begin. Ew! Oh. That's so gross. I would have preferred live squirrels. Yes, well. I'm in your debt, Larissa. I don't need your gratitude. Just find the delinquent responsible. That's not Lucas's cohorts. You still think I'm the monster? Hasn't moved it out. Yeah, well, when you change your mind and you want my help, you know where to find me. I guarantee Morning Song doesn't give a damn about your well being. They're only interested in your money. I haven't always been against birthdays. 
Each one reminds me I'm a year closer to death's cold embrace. The perfect cake. Was it candy? No, it's not. <laughs> oh my god. Dr. Timbot, I haven't seen you since our session with your family, which was certainly one I won't forget. Who's Goody? What? She's a very distant cousin. I doubt a cold, heartless person would be sitting by her friend's bedside feeling some modicum of guilt for his condition. I didn't ask for a free session. Consider it my birthday gift. Mm. Copy of an old death certificate you requested. Oh, thanks, Agnes. Oh, oh, by the way, has Inez Moon called again? You mean about the lights coming on at the old Gates place? A couple days ago. I was about to say, that girl is not dead. What do you think delivered the cake? Yeah, I went with a 98% tart chocolate ganache, knowing your preferred color palette. <laughs> it's about how whitewashing the sins of our past will come back to kill us all. Since we're even, you've kind of been ghosting me. Am I wrong? Just like an answer. Your father and I buried the hatchet, and maybe you should do the same. I don't bury hatchets. I sharpen them. Oh? I need your help. Don't go. You want some drawing glasses? When did you draw this? A couple days ago. I started having those dreams again, like before. Is this a monster in them? No, but I can feel it. Ooh. I can hear you up there playing. Wednesday, I forgot this. Can you get it back to her? Birthday gift from Enid. Aren't you a boyfriend? Nope. Definitely not. Mm-hmm. Take your advice. No matter how hard I try, there will always be people who look down on me. My mission is to prove it wrong. Most people think I'll never amount to anything. And while we're being honest, I haven't done much to make them think differently. Could he show me this house for a reason? I need to unlock its secrets. The damn phone, it's noble. Listen, I might have figured out who's behind all of this. SUV. I saw him coming out of the Gates Mansion. Gates Mansion. Call me old-fashioned, but when someone is running for on the way to give the police key information, it usually means they were onto something. And all signs point to the Gates family in that house. Happens around here. Incredible luck. As of now, the school is on full lockdown. And your off-campus privileges are revoked until further notice. Did she get you up to this? Encourage me to pursue other interests? No. But she will expel you if you continue to defy her. I've reconsidered your offer. The non-birthday dinner? Do you ever even love her? Oh. Well, you can never know. Oh! How about I say I'm about to wolf out and get a pass to the looping cages and say you volunteered to lock me in? My deviousness has finally rubbed off me. Let's go. He's our Uber driver? Uber driver? <laughs> I thought we were going on a date. I thought this was a girl's night out. There's been a change of plans. Who does she think? I'm gonna go check out the garage. Thing. 
Harm up well for psychopaths. There's Garrett. He's out cascading Father Ansel. And you must be wrong. Understood? Mm-hmm. Now you know what's at stake. Everything you got to protect my less. I think I deserve another chance. Please. One more step out of line, and you will be expelled. You need to save your spirit as well. No negotiation. Oh. Over? Tonight was just the icing on the birthday cake you, you couldn't even be bothered to cut. You will use anyone, anyone to get what you want, even if, even if it means putting them in danger. You want to be alone Wednesday? Be alone. Be alone. Could he warn that I was destined to be alone? Maybe it's inevitable. But for the first time in my life, it doesn't feel good. But I won't be intimidated, and I will never give up. When Mayor Walker got too close to the truth, he was silenced. So whoever is watching me, know this. I will find you. All right, you guys, this was a good episode. I am glad we're getting closer to the reveal of who is this person who's behind these killings. Of course, we already know early on in the season about from when the coroner was talking about certain body parts have been taken. And I'm still really feeling like the reveal is, I really want to think it's the doctor. Now, the reason I say that now is the simple fact that when you see the scene of Wednesday at the hospital, you know, just talking and at first you don't know because she they just kind of pan her But then it opens up and it shows that she's visiting Eugene. I love that even though she doesn't like to give off the vibe that she likes to be More um, friendly this and other with individuals and all that she does have a soft spot for Eugene I like that, you know, nice little bond them feeling like they're different for everybody and all that and She respected that and she looked out for him especially when they were trying to bully him whatever during the you know going to pilgrims world now needless to say that woman walked in there with those flowers, and I like how it panned on that. Now, when they were at that house, now, because all this keeps coming around, sitting around the Garrett family. Now, when I said in my last uh, reaction was the fact that the mayor was looking intently at the file that was given to him in the showing, and I remember they said that the girl, you know, might have had been, I don't know if she was, you know, sent to a flight for but then she drowned. I'm like, do you all know fully about her? The way they said it, of course, with the son, definitely with the father and the mother, Okay, definitely. But with her, I'm not so sure. And that's why I kind of was like, mm, I don't know. And since we're seeing a little bit more in this picture, I'm like, I'm thinking she's not gone. And then the fact that, you know, Wednesday trying to summon Goody, trying to hone her visions and deal with this before it really takes over and she's not able to control them. Seeing that she's seeing visions of the front of gates of what's considered, you know, Crackstone, but then with the Garrett family. It's just everything's connected and I'm thinking, okay, at first I thought it could possibly be Miss Thornhill played by Richie, but I'm not, but I feel like she does might have some part in to do this. I mean, she went down 
<laughs> to the secret society, whatever, when she stepped her hands when it went down there. So I said, there's something agenda with her as well. Is she somewhat connected to this? It could be her as well. You never know. Change up her appearance. You just know. But I really wanted to do that. But you know, the way they like to cut things, like make you think it's someone else. And it could be another. They're doing very well with this show. I'm like, I don't know what to think. And then, you know, seeing how Wednesday pretty much used Tyler and Enid to get out of the situation because she's been pretty much, you know, the school's on lockdown. And then you see her, you know, trying, you know, to use Enid like, oh, it's a full moon. Lesson. I can tell her that, you know, I'm about to move on. You're going to take me with her and all that. But then you're sitting there telling me, hey, I want to meet you, you know, for a non-birthday dinner and all that. Mind you, they did a surprise or something for her and all that, which, you know, she gave her a little win on that. But in the end... Again, like they're saying, a couple of them have said, you keep using us, whatever, and now you're putting them truly in harm's way. When they end up at that house that Garrett going through, and you see that room, which is Laurel Garrett's, Laura Garrett, excuse me, you know, room, all clean, no cobwebs, the beds nicely made. It wonders. I, I wonder. I, I just, I'm trying to think who else it could possibly be. I just... Oh, my gosh. In my mind, I'm wrapping it around, but it's just like the way it's just, everything's being just, you know presented to us whatever and all I can just be totally off about this and just like please don't put nothing in the comment section about this I want I'm here we got two more episodes and I'm trying to stick with it <clears throat> I will say this I like seeing Bianca talk to the young guy knowing that he's messed up and how he's not changing and learning from the cho choices he's making his father of course having him you know for two weeks up so he couldn't have caused other things that happen but her dealing with Siren and stopping him from getting involved, meaning her mother was already trying to run game and she did on the young boy, get him to join his app and sending him a little gift and all that. And I'm glad she caught that. And they both have that little bit of understanding. So she doesn't feel like she's the only one that feels a certain way about fitting in this and all that. That's why when her mother made that comment talking about if they only knew you signed your way into Neverborn. So it's interesting. The aspect, and I love that we're getting other characters in here where they're slowly flushing out their stories a little bit because it's not like I don't mind seeing Wednesday as the you know focal point of the show, hence the name. But I like that we're going to learn about some other people. I look forward definitely watching with Enid going through what she's going through, what she's trying to wolf out, and all that. And then the situations with learning a little bit more about Xavier, Tyler, and of course Bianca. Now, with Enid. And Tyler, not realizing when they was like, you know, if you wanted just to do this, you could have just told us you didn't have to lie. And I agree with him. I was like, I like how he's always forthcoming with her <laughs> as well with um, Enid being awesome and all that. And just trying to be a friend to her. Now, also with Xavier, you know, they know he was wrong for doing that. Like, you pulled that thing out and it showed her that picture and then it came to life. It was beautiful, though. But I'm like, buddy... You know, you could tell she does not feel comfortable in the of having any real sort of emotions. Like, you know, she's pretty much definitely closed off in that instance and all that. But, you know, he truly made her feel uncomfortable to the point where, you know, she didn't want to even entertain that. You could tell he likes her. You know Tyler do. Dealing with a kind of like a little, you know, love triangle somewhat, even though she's not interested in that aspect at all. But these two guys really like her. You know, Tyler feeling at the time she's ghosting her with her and all that. But being in a house, putting him in that situation, her and Enid, you know, in a little, little, I want to say, God, it was like a little hole shack. It's a name for it, but I can't remember. Trying to get away from the creature. And then um, them trying to get out there. She has to go back and get tired. He's got, he's scratched. So I'm wondering, will he be infected? Will something happen to him from being hurt? <coughs> you know, you present, you know, putting that boy in this way. And the sheriff's like, you're doing all these things. Yeah, you're trying to give me some information. Sally. I really want to know who it is and the way they kind of keep showing things happening. The mayor getting, you know, you know, hit by this car that was actually at the Garrett's family. Just so much stuff going on. And then the fact that, you know, the sheriff had to, you know, tell her, stop seeing my son. You know, you were in trouble with the school. She had to present herself to, the, you know, to the principal and all that. And, and, and just, you know, apologize and say, please, you know, give me another chance. Ina doesn't want to even be in the room. It's like, you want to be alone? Be alone. I'm a friend to you. I didn't ask you just that. That's what friends do. You don't have to always have to ask when you know you're going to do that for your friend. And she said it when she sat there. She says, you know, I always, you know, make it a cause to be alone. But in this instance, it doesn't feel great. Yeah, it's going to hurt you. I said, because at the end, she, a tiny little bit of her likes the friendship she has with Enid. She likes it a little bit to a standard because she wants to control overall narrative of that friendship and all that. But you can't do that with another person. They are their own. They are their own person. You can't really do that. She gives her you know, that space, she doesn't, you know, come on too strong with her and all that, but Enid, you know, is very vibrant and all that, she's sweet, and she's over there, when people say things, that, you know, about her, she always takes takes up for her, so it's like, you know, Wednesday, you need to come to a realization when you're dealing with people, they're not going to be the way you want them to be, because you just say certain things, and 
these people truly care enough about you to consider your thoughts this and another and all and work with you but you keep doing things and you're like to say in this instance you truly put some people in harm's way you could have gotten killed so i know she's going to come to how she's going to move forward because right now she's strained her relationship with Enid is totally strained um her opening up that jewelry box she took from that room and seeing those pictures i'm like what in the world i mean even a picture of them in the car i said you took it that quickly who yeah Oh my goodness, show is so good. I'm like, wow, I'm just literally stumped because I'm not figuring out. I'm not always good at trying to figure out always right away who it, who is the person, the reveal of whoever. But I like that this one has me truly stumped and that doesn't happen often. So, you know, it is what it is. But I'm still, I'm still right now really thinking it could be that doctor, her therapist. The part with the flies and all that kind of covered up and those fresh flowers were in that room. I'm going to tell you, I just... And she, the way she was talking to her in the room and all that saying this thing oh, about this and that and other and her looking at her like how are you talking about goody I'm like huh like yeah you keep they keep giving us little little breadcrumbs with her and then the comments you know with you know Thornhill trying to you know be understanding and, and reserving you know a book with and how she just totally shut her down you see the look on her face I feel so bad it was just like wow this girl every chance she gets but it's like that's gonna come back to get you honey I said you're gonna need help here and there and as much as you like you think you can do everything by yourself you can't so, again, this was a great episode. I truly enjoy this. <laughs> Getting down to the end, two more episodes. Look forward to seeing, you know, how this is all going to turn out. And I'm looking forward to the reveal. I can only imagine once I figure out who it is or who they show, my eyes will probably be lit up like this. So, with that said, you guys, comment below. Let me know what you think. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next uh, reaction. You guys take care.